All right, so Google is rolling out their new search engine, for lack of a better term, the search generative experience. I got access to the new Google search AI. And in this video, I wanna just show you some example searches from the blogging and niche site space, some common keywords that we go after to show you what those searches will now look like with the new Google search. Let's dive into our first example. So a, a very common type of keyword that we would go after with a niche site or a blog is a how to keyword, right? How to do X, Y, Z. So in this example, I have pulled up how to shut off a water main. We recently had a leak in our house. Uh, so this is something I've been reading up on. So I wanna show you the live search, meaning before I hit enter on my search, because what you'll see if it does generate the AI answer like it did before, is how relatively slow it is at this time. So anyway, let me just hit return and then you can see it happen, right? So you can see the generating at the top. Now, I say relatively slow, that was probably one second. But it, in a lot of these searches, it does take a little bit of time to actually generate the answer, right? So this is the new Google search for better or worse right now when they roll this out, okay? So you can see at the top, this is the AI answer, right? To shut off a water main, you can, and it's giving us kind of a few options here, right? Turn a ball, turn a round wheel, turn a gate, and then, you know, a little bit of a paragraph snippet here. This is kind of a big featured snippet. In this example, I can do show more and it's gonna give me the rest of the result, all right? So this is the AI answer. Now, directly to the right are basically the new top three, right? When we talk about ranking in the top three of Google, I don't know, it's no longer gonna be this, right? Now we're getting all videos here, but this is one, this is two, and this is three. When I look at the new results, Ranking in the top three is going to be these three right here, right? Because if I actually want to read an article, I'm going to click into this result here. And then the AI is going to jump to the point on the page where it's grabbing the answer from, okay? Now I can go back here and then see the rest of the results. And if you want to see kind of where this answer is being generated from, you can click this little icon up here. I don't think a lot of users are gonna click this, but as an SEO, you can click that and it's gonna show you where it's generating the different parts of the answer, right? So it's turning this ball valve a quarter turn. It's saying it's getting from th these three sources. And then this bullet here, turn a round wheel handle valve clockwise, it's getting from here. Turn a gate valve a few clicks clockwise, it's getting from here, so so on and so forth. I don't really know the purpose of this, but it's gonna be interesting when we're gonna study AI, how to rank in AI, how Google's generating these this answer, where it's coming from. And then of course I can click this arrow and see more sources over here. I can also follow up with the AI, right? Is there a valve to turn water off on the water main? And it's gonna regenerate or, or refresh a new page and now I'm kind of in a chat, right? Where it's giving me the answer as I'm asking the follow-up questions. The good news, if you wanna call it, is they are including the sources directly to the right. So in terms of the layout, I don't think it's that bad. Meaning in a traditional featured snippet, right? We would have the answer and then it, the link, the source link would be below this. Um, in the new AI results, right? So here's a, a typical featured snippet, right? This is what this would look like right now. We're getting the answer. And then we get the source with the link directly below the answer. In the new AI, we're getting, you know, a longer answer that takes up more screen, but we're getting three sources directly to the right. Is that gonna impact clicks? I think that remains to be seen, but in a how-to keyword, this is what it looks like right now. All right, let's look at a classic affiliate marketing keyword, best X for Y, right? So I'm gonna do a best credit cards for travel. And you know, when I did this before, it did not have a result, which is interesting, but I'm gonna hit search and do this live with you guys. 
right? So now in this example, for whatever reason, not only does it not show an AI answer, but it doesn't even give me the option to generate an AI answer, right? So sometimes when I've been playing around with this, you won't get the AI snapshot, but there's a button at the top that says something like, you know, generate an AI answer. With this specific keyword, and I'm not sure why, there's no AI to be found anywhere on the page. Now, Google did say when they were announcing this that with, you know, YM, YL type keywords like finance, that they wouldn't rely on AI so much, but you know, this is definitely a finance keyword, but you know, there's nothing about it that screams to me, we can't have an AI answer. But I thought it was interesting that for a classic best X for Y keyword, in this example, there is no AI. All right, let's do another affiliate keyword that is not YMYL, right? So I'm gonna do best backpack for travel and then see what an affiliate keyword looks like when I believe AI will generate a response. All right, so you can see the generating, this one's gonna be a little longer, right? Now think about it as a user, do you wanna sit through, right? That was much longer than the first example that I showed. You know, how are users gonna to react to this change? And, and I, I don't mean me and you, I mean everyday people who don't care anything about SEO, they just wanna get a result. And think about how much Google optimizes and cares about speed, meaning generating an organic listing, right? Anytime you do a regular Google search, you get a listing in like, a, a, however, a half a second, right? Very, very fast. That AI answer up there took a couple of seconds, right? So in terms of user experience, we'll see how people re react to that and whether they actually do click on these results. Now, in terms of the answer itself, what I did notice during d using these best keywords is that Google is gonna pull the buyer guide part and then give us that answer, right? So when choosing a travel backpack, you can consider things like storage, comfort, size, and durability. It's not in the very top of the answer giving me the list, right? What is the best backpack for travel? And now we do get down here, okay? And this is good for travel, good for laptops, good for travel, right? There's a image, there's a price, there's review ratings, and there's summaries. Now, if I click into this, it's gonna open up kind of a new screen. It doesn't take me to a link, um, but I can then from here, buy it on Best Buy, buy it on Amazon. Now, to me, when I'm Googling a keyword like this, I'm not really in, I want to go to amazon.com and, and hit purchase, right? I, I'm still researching, right? So again, thinking about this in terms of SEO, in terms of impacting our clicks, is this a satisfactory result? Does this answer my question better than, for example, the first organic result, which is going to be the wire cutter, which actually tests the products, does hands-on reviews, makes you know, real recommendations based on using the products. What's the better result for the user? Is it the wire cutter article or is it just this kind of generic answer at the top? Like, honestly, this reminds me of very thin affiliate content that we were able to rank very easily not that long ago, right? It's just kind of generic. Well, you have to think about storage and then it's just a list of products, right? This is like the old school way of making a, a best of guide and Google is now kind of rewarding this content. But is this going to answer your question? Will you purchase a backpack for travel based on this AI result? To me, I don't think so, right? It's just a very unhelpful, very small bullet list of features to look for and then kind of four random bags doesn't really show me people using it in real life, what their first hand impression of is the product. Yes, I can buy it, but it's not actually reviewing the content, right? Like the wire cutter article. Now, what's interesting to me is that this wire cutter article is number one in organic, right? But when we come over here, right? Who's gonna get the click? It's not the wire cutter. Again, 
I'm not 100% sure how Google is doing this, but that's that will impact the wire cutter. So right now, travelfreak.com, to me, this is the new number one. Now in the organic results, I'm curious. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're not even in, and maybe because they won't double list them, and that's why. But in the traditional organic result, they're not listed. And again, maybe because they don't want to double list. But this is the new organic number one result, right? So will 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 we be optimizing for the new featured snippet or the AI snippet, right? Because I would rather be that site, Travel Freak, than Wirecutter in this result. But I thought this was an interesting one too. All right, let's look at your classic question answer type keyword, meaning, you know, the answer can be in like one to 30 words, okay? Classic niche site keyword. Tons of people run their entire niche sites based on this strategy, okay? Finding these random long tail keywords that no big publisher is going to go after and just publishing like a thousand of these articles, right? Here's a classic example. How long does steak last in the fridge? Classic long tail question answer type keyword. Again, that people base their entire strategy on. Now, this is going to be the keyword, the type of keyword that's going to have the biggest impact in my opinion, right? So when I run this search, again, notice how the snippet gives me the answer two seconds faster than the AI, the AI answer. Not only that, I would argue that the, the snippet is a much better result. Number one, because it gives me the answer in bold, big font right here. That's the answer right there. And it gives me the answer here as well. The AI answer, and I'm not saying Google's not gonna improve this, they definitely will, but at the time, the AI answer is right here, but it's not, it doesn't jump out as much to me as the snippet answer, right? And again, we've got the sources that the AI is generating from over here, and we can ask follow-up questions here. But this, to me, is gonna have the biggest impact on niche sites going forward. If your entire strategy is is going off, going after these random long tail keywords, I think you need to pay attention um, because AI is gonna be able to gobble up these keywords and there's really no need for me to click into the organic results or the AI results, the, the, the source results, let's call it, for this type of keyword, right? For the best backpack keyword, I'm probably still gonna click because I wanna actually read a review of a backpack. For a strict informational keyword like this, there's really no reason for me to click these results. All right, let's do another example, the recipe. Uh, one recipe example, I know there's a lot of food bloggers, a lot of recipe bloggers that may be nervous, but in my opinion, I, if I was a recipe blogger, I would not be that nervous, at least right now, right? So let's look at smoke, smoked pulled pork recipe. Again, do it live here. There is, and, I, and this was true earlier, at least for this example, there's no AI answer. And, you know, is Google going to try to cobble up together a bunch of recipes, right? Because they're kind of sourcing the AI answers from multiple sources at once and kind of synth synthesizing those results into one answer. Will that work for recipes? I don't think so. Again, great news right now for this specific keyword, there's no AI answer. Now, if we did smoked brisket recipe, I'm just curious. No, for that one as well, no. Um, so again, good news for now for recipe bloggers in, in thinking about this at a higher level. If I'm a user and I want a recipe, I don't want an AI answer that's got a, a bunch of random recipes cobbled together into one recipe, right? That doesn't make sense. I want to actually click on a result. Recipes for me are very visual, right? I'm going to click in part based on how good these photos look. So right now, if I'm a recipe blogger, I think I'm feeling pretty good, but in terms of this AI stuff, things are changing so fast, it's, it's tough. 
So that's what Google's AI search looks like right now. I hope those examples were helpful. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the new Google search. Is it going to affect your strategy at all? All right, guys, thanks.